Welcome to the Third House Podcast. I'm Erica, your host, and together we'll unravel the astrological and psychological tapestry that shapes our lives. Join me as we navigate the threads that connect our chart to our emotions, relationships, and inner world. Get ready for illuminating conversation and insight, because self-discovery has no bounds. Hello, everyone. Welcome to your 2025 year ahead astrological podcast. I will be doing month by month. There will be chapters, so you can easily jump back to each month. However, please listen through to the end because I will be concluding with some general notes and also some perspective on. 2026. So in my opinion, I think 2025 into 2026 is really shifting us into sort of a new chapter, a new wave, sort of like 2020 did, but obviously in a very different way. Um, So definitely listen through to the end so that you can sort of wrap up and gain that perspective of what 2025 might be really gearing you up for into 2026. So again, This is not conclusive. I do not include every transit. If you want something more detailed that you can have with you on your device or your phone, I do have a very lengthy, I believe it's about 39 pages, about 60 transits completely broken down with advice based on each rising sign available on my website. The link is in the description below for that. So if you want to grab that guide first, download it to your device, and then listen through this podcast episode to add additional notes about, you know, anything that comes up for you, please do so. If not, I would definitely take notes regardless because I do go through a lot of key dates, things to look out for, preparatory shadow type periods um, that will definitely help prep you before the actual transit happens. Um, But again, this is not conclusive, so please refer to your own chart, your own placements. And as always, I do offer one-on-one sessions for those that really want to go in depth or just need some help or perspective along the way that's very specific to your fingerprint, your birth chart. And the link is in the description below for that. And lastly, my last announcement, I will be increasing my prices, not drastically, but as we go into the new year, as I'm increasing my workload, um, I am going to increase my prices. Um, So just be aware of that. Please subscribe and come back each month, especially if you're new here. Every month I provide a lot of supplemental content, monthly horoscopes that break down the transits in more detail along the way. So again, definitely grab your 2025 yearly guide, which goes into a lot more detail um, as we go through this, or just grab your notes, get ready, buckle up. And again, don't forget to listen through to the end to really take all of this information and apply it to sort of what you might be gearing up for into 2026. Hello, Leo Risings. On January 6th, 2025, Mars is going to retrograde back into your Cancer 12th house of that subconscious, dreams, life vision, sort of the house of self undoing. This is where, you know, limiting beliefs, self sabotage, mental patterns, um, for better or for worse, can sort of reside. So, Mars retrograding back into this area can definitely tie in to, you know, tie in themes regarding your Aries ninth house of higher education, your knowledge, your beliefs, your spirituality, travel, writing, teaching, those areas. um, If those are areas that are highlighted in your life, but all in all, definitely sort of your knowledge, your beliefs um, could definitely be sort of coming back around. In addition to Mars ruling your Scorpio fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. 
So you could heavily be thinking about sort of home, relationships with family, um, property, real estate, um, travel, beliefs, spirituality. So you could have a lot. I mean, Mars going through the 12th can definitely cause sort of monkey mind, as I call it, um, even insomnia if you're prone to it. Uh, pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to life vision, sort of any limiting beliefs that could be shaping something in the home, could be shaping something in terms of belief or knowledge as well. But in terms of timing and cycles, this could also be bringing you back to revising anything that was coming up roughly around the end of October, beginning of November 2024. So if you're listening to this in October of 2024, when I launch it, um, pay attention to, you know, just know, just know sort of like journal what's sort of going on October, November, because you're likely going to come back around to it. Um, in terms of revising, maybe how you take action or sort of what your desires are regarding the situation that's playing out mentally, but also tying in themes of sort of, you know, knowledge, beliefs, home, family, property, and real estate. Then on January 13th, 2025, there will be a full moon in your Cancer 12th house at 24 degrees. Now this full moon in your 12th house will also be conjunct Mars retrograde at 27 degrees. So this is definitely, I think, tying into the story in terms of a, you know, the full moon is definitely highlighting and illuminating um, the more hidden part of your chart, the more internal mental part of your chart and thus your life. So it's illuminating this, but it's also illuminating your, you know, illuminating the 12th and 6th house axis. So this is really like the mind and the body as well. Um, Playing a part in terms of what your reviews, reviewing and revising, you know, your desires or actions around home, family, property, real estate, and sort of like, you know, your knowledge, your beliefs, your education, travel, um, writing, publishing, teaching, speaking, whatever it may be specific to you. um, It's definitely culminating. It's a culminating moment. Then on January 27th, Venus enters shadow. This is particularly important for Leo Risings because Venus rules your Taurus 10th house of career and public recognition, as well as your Libra third house of communication and daily environment. So Venus is actually going to be in shadow from January 27th through February 28th. So in and around this time period, Venus is going to be building contextual clues, um, tying in themes of career, public recognition, communication, maybe a little bit of short distance travel, if that's something you do for work in the area of a money house. So what's going on with long-term money plans, money management, other people's resources, including your partner's resources, as well as transformational work that could be building contextual clues regarding, you know, career choice, career path, and any communication necessary um, to do so. So definitely pay attention to that shadow period again through roughly January 27th through February 28th before Venus will go retrograde and you will have time to sort of review and revise this area and these themes. Then we're really ending the month on January 29th, 2025 with this new moon in Aquarius at nine degrees. So this new moon is really pulling the sun and the moon together in the area of partnership, whether it's personal or professional, but giving you an opportunity to kind of create a new chapter, kind of create new energy in the area of marriage and or partnership, um, personal or professional. Now, as we get into February... February 1st, 2025, Venus in your Pisces eighth house. Again, the eighth house is a very interesting house. It's really like the psychotherapy, the transformational work, but it's also, you know, resources. So 
you know, your investments, your assets, your taxes, your debt, your loans, your partner's resources. So it's really the more, like, I like to think of the eighth house as, you know, it's a versed to the first. So it's, it's also a more hidden part of our chart, a more shadow area of our chart. So it's like, we don't necessarily openly discuss or advertise sort of like our resources, our long-term money management or our partner's resources. We don't necessarily openly advertise sort of what's going on with our fears or, um, you know, everything we talked about in therapy, essentially. So that's how I kind of like to think of the eighth house. Um, but on February 1st, 2025, that Venus in that Pisces eighth house goes conjunct the North node at 28 degrees. This is particularly an important time to note um, as Venus is in that shadow period, building contextual clues going conjunct the North node, which is a point of life direction. Um, You know, where we want to go, even purpose, some call it, but um this is really the north node is this point of increase it's where we're hungry and so venus is still in shadow building the contextual clues but it is exalted in pisces this is a very strong venus and again venus rules at 10th house, 10th house of career and public recognition and it's going conjunct the north node which is that point of increase or hunger and so um there could definitely be contextual clues or situations, stories playing out that are increasing and building around this time that, again, pay attention specifically, note it, what's going on around this time that you know is going to come back around. You might have a different perspective. You might have time to sort out what you really love and value about it before you move forward and sort of push it forward maybe out into the world. So... Another important thing to note around this time is that when Venus does go retrograde, it's going to meet back up with the North Node in this Pisces 8th house, but at Venus's most exalted degree. This will happen on April 1st, so I will get to it in the month of April, but I want you to know it now, so... When you're sort of looking at these dates and knowing when to come back around, you know Venus is going to go retrograde. You're going to review and revise, but it's going to meet the North Node, that point of increase, life direction, at its most exalted degree. So that is a very strong Venus. However, that Venus is retrograde. So it's sort of giving it a lot of strength, a lot of resources to increase the direction we want to take, but we're still in that revisionary period. So we still might have to hold off. February 7th, 2025, Neptune then goes conjunct the North Node in Pisces at 28 degrees. So Neptune's been in Pisces for some time. This is really nothing new, but I want you to think back to 2016. Back in 2016, the south node and Neptune joined in your Pisces 8th house. So now as we're getting into February, we're starting to maybe see the signs of a full cycle or a full circle moment where back in 2016, we might have been making major changes or major releases. Um... Especially in the eighth house, there could have been a lot of fear. There could have been a lot of um, maybe transformational work or, um, you know, financial stuff going on. But there could also, the eighth house is where we merge, where we merge our finances. So there could have been changes in terms of how you merge finances with, within partnership for better or for worse around this time. But this is sort of now in February 2025, the North Node is going conjunct Neptune in this area of the 8th house for Leo Risings. And this is the point of increase. So you could, some of you might see these sort of like not mirror images, but sort of like, like I'm a Leo Rising. And I remember back in 2016, there was 
major, um, my, my husband now, I mean, we were together in 2016, but he was, he was graduating school and, you know, looking for a job. And we, that's when we really started to like, let go of certain aspects of our life and start to sort of merge our finances together, even though we weren't married yet. Um, so now this is coming back around and I, I mean, I won't discuss it personally, but I definitely can see like where things, where we were then is sort of coming full circle and moving us forward this time. If that makes sense. I'm sure if you're Leo rising for some of you like this, this might make sense, but basically you might see similar themes to 2016, but in a way where you're actually able to move forward instead of like release and let go. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But February 12th, 2025, there will actually be a full moon in your Leo first house of self, body, appearance, identity at 24 degrees. I'm not going to mention every f- new moon and full moon in this podcast episode. Um, I will, I, I, I want to talk about the ones that I find the most peculiar. Um, But February 12th, this full moon in your Leo first house forms a T-square with uh, Mercury and Uranus as well. So Mercury and Uranus can sometimes activate the nervous system. So I notice people get a little bit agitated, irritable, or anxious around this time. So if you are prone to that, I would pay attention to this day. The full moon is quickly moving, so you might only feel it throughout the day. I think it's worth noting if you are prone to it. But the T-square is sort of like, it it forms two squares at once where the apex planet um, being, I believe, Uranus at the last degrees of Taurus has a lot of pressure on it to act. And so this is where, how do I balance my needs versus the needs of others? How do I balance my needs within my partnership or my marriage in order to take action and change regarding career, business, or public recognition? It's brief, but I think it's worth noting. February 23rd, 2025, Holly freaking Lula, like Mars goes direct, 17 degrees, cancer in our 12th house, I, again, I'm a Leo rising and I'm looking at this and I'm like, I can't wait for Mars to get the hell out of our 12th house. (laughs) I don't, I don't like Mars in the 12th because it creates, it opposes a lot of my Capricorn placements in the sixth. So if you have Capricorn placements in the sixth house, Um, A lot of placements in the Aries ninth house, Libra third house. It's going to square or oppose those areas and create a lot of change and revision. And it's going to play a part in that. So um, just, you know, forewarn you on that. But Mars going direct February 23rd, 2025. It's sort of like whatever we were reviewing and revising in terms of our actions and our desires it's now moving forward. It's sort of like we can take the deep breath and be like, okay, I've got the perspective, figured it out. I know what action I need to take. I know what I really want and I can sort of move forward. Mars does rule that fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. So you might see the forward movement regarding anything to do with home, family, property, or real estate. But you could also see forward movement around like any education, teaching, writing, publishing, um, traveling, especially if you have your midheaven in your Aries ninth house, definitely pay attention to career and public recognition with this Mars retrograde transit. But all in all, it goes direct and it could, it could be bringing you back to what was coming up starting back in the beginning of October, 2024, if we're talking about cycles. So again, if you're listening to this in the beginning of October, 2024, when I release this, um, just note sort of like, what are some subtle, again, this, this is contextual clues. So it's very subtle. 
So pay very close attention. What's coming up with, you know, relationships with family, home, property, real estate themes, what conversations are coming up. Things might not be unraveling or happening, but you're getting the clues. So pay very close attention to home, family, property, real estate, some of you career, and the majority of us, you know, the travel, the beliefs, the knowledge, the publishing, the teaching, if that is applicable to sort of what you do in your career. Now, March is when things, in my opinion, really start to pop off, really start to sort of heat up. Um, So March 1st, 2025, Mercury goes conjunct the North Node in Pisces at 27 degrees. It's important to note that Mercury enters shadow today. So although Mercury goes conjunct the North Node at this point of increase, Mercury rules your long-term goals. It also rules your finances and your income. So yes, it's at this point in the North Node in this in the other money house, right? So Mercury rules your, your earned income, what's yours, your self-esteem, and it's going conjunct the North Node in the eighth house of long-term money management, your partner's resources, your investments, your transformational work, all that stuff. So it's important to note that yes, it's conjunct the North Node at this point of increase, but it's entering shadow. So whatever comes up, you'll likely kind of come back, revise it, review it, maybe change the plan, have a new perspective. So just be aware of that. Um, In addition to March 1st, 2025, Venus goes retrograde, starting that revisionary period around career public recognition, communication in the area of finances um, that potentially played out from the end of January through the last day of February. Then March 14th, 2025, we are full-blown eclipse season. So March 14th, full moon, total lunar eclipse in Virgo, 23 degrees. This full moon total lunar eclipse in Virgo happens in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So this is really, really illuminating something about finances, material possessions, and self-worth, creating any necessary change. Um, This is a full moon illumination on steroids. So The good news is, is that for the majority of Leo risings, you know, especially if you're for Midheaven and Taurus, by configuration, by sign, it will trine the career and the public recognition. So I'm hoping this illumination to finances will positively influence the career or vice versa. Now, this full moon total lunar eclipse in your Virgo second house of earned income will also oppose Saturn and Pisces, which is nothing new, but it's an additional theme for me because Saturn rules at sixth house of daily work, health, routine, co-workers. So it's tying in additional themes of maybe work, career, routines, um, also being tied into this major illumination or potential change around finances or perspective on finances. Then the following day, so the full moon total lunar eclipse on March 14th, March 15th, Mercury goes retrograde at nine degrees Aries. This is very important. I mean, Mercury goes retrograde all the time, but this is particularly important because Mercury rules that full moon lunar eclipse in Virgo. So Although this culminating moment is happening in the area of finances, and it's really highlighting the axis, the two money houses in your chart, um, the ruler of this eclipse is stopped in the sky and going retrograde the next day. Um, So it's sort of like, kind of like a hold up, wait, something's happening here, but We might need to pause, we might need to review and revise um, before sort of moving things forward. So again, this will likely start the revisionary period regarding what came up, 
maybe around finances, long-term goals, sort of social network as well from March 1st through March 14th in the midst of that eclipse season. Then on March 29th, 2025, we have the new moon partial solar eclipse in Aries at nine degrees. This is important as well because Mercury on the 15th went retrograde at nine degrees Aries. Now we have this new moon solar eclipse in Aries at nine degrees. So this revisionary period around Mercury, which for you is money, long-term goals, and social network, um, could also tie into you creating a new beginning around potential ninth house themes as well. How you seek more knowledge, higher education, how you travel, how you teach, how you write, um, spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs are all sort of on the table in terms of helping you create this new chapter involving finances, self-worth, long-term goals, and social network. Lastly, in March, we get to March 30th, 2025, where Neptune enters the area of your Aries ninth house of that higher education, spirituality, travel, teaching, publishing, really your knowledge, your beliefs, um, the area of growth and potential. So Neptune leaves your Pisces eighth house, which I'm, I mean, personally, I'm biased. I am a Leo rising. I'm kind of looking forward to, um, somewhat, but again, I'll get in, I'll get into the collective of why I say somewhat, but Neptune entering your Aries ninth house can, it's moving. Neptune is a planet of illusion and, um, it dissolves things. So Neptune moving into the area of a fire sign is sort of like, are we dissolving or burning things down that no longer work for us in terms of our knowledge, our beliefs, um, you know, what we know to be true, our growth, our potential. So we could be going through sort of this shift. And I say we as a fellow Leo rising sort of, um, dissolving old struct because uh, Saturn is going to join this area, excuse me, for my stuttering. Um, Saturn's going to join this area and it's sort of like, are we going to dissolve outdated structures and boundaries that no longer serve our ability to seek more growth and potential? Like, have we maybe been living in outdated systems where we have our belief We have our knowledge about where we want to be, where we want to go, but doing it in maybe old structures or old patterns that have existed for a long time, either individually or collectively, are not going to get us there. And so we, we could be given an opportunity to sort of dissolve those outdated structures and boundaries and foundations that really aren't going to support where we our goal, our growth, and our our potential. Now, April 1st, 2025, this was the key date I mentioned previously, I believe, in February, because April 1st is when that Venus retrograde goes conjunct the North Node again, but at its most exalted degree. So remember February 1st when Venus was in shadow. So Venus was still direct, but it was in that shadow contextual period, conjunct the North node in your Pisces eighth house, transformation, other people's resources, including your partners. Um, But this time it's retrograded back to that North node in that Pisces eighth house, exalted at its most exalted degree, conjunct the North node at this point of increase So I think there could be a moment where there's a lot of strength or resource to sort of align, potentially align yourself to sort of a life direction or purpose or sort of where you want to go. But that 
Venus is still retrograde. So it's still in this revisionary period, despite maybe this moment of clarity of like, oh, I can see the clicking into place, but I still got a little bit more tying up loose ends here before we really move this forward. Now, April 7th, 2025, Mercury goes direct at 26 degrees Pisces and will join that North Node on April 10th. So like April is like where things really start to move forward and start to go conjunct the North Node finally direct after, you know, this review and revise period. So April 7th, Mercury goes direct joins the North Node on April 10th. So give or take a day or two, April 7th through April 10th, you could definitely feel this forward movement about anything you were sort of reviewing and revising in um, the past couple weeks. But Mercury rules, you know, your earned income and your self-worth, your long-term goals and your social network. So this is where maybe you've had this revisionary period. Again, Venus is still technically about to go direct but mercury first so it's sort of like you first get this direct movement um around things sort of moving forward maybe around finances your self-worth your goals your social network then we get to april 12th 2025 and we have this full moon in libra which is your third house of communication and your daily environment but venus is finally direct So Mercury ruling your money, your goals, your social network in your other money house, other people's resources, partners' resources, starts to move direct, conjunct the North Node, point of increase, kind of locking us into place, life direction, giving us that opportunity to sort of where do we want to align. Then we get Venus direct starts applying and moving towards that north node as well again exalted very has a lot of strength after this revisionary period venus ruling the career the public recognition so maybe this is the point where money goals social network starts to kind of click into place or we can maybe see the next step involving sort of any transformation we've done or where our resources are or other people's resources are. In addition to things sort of moving forward or maybe clicking into place regarding career, public recognition and communication. In addition to the full moon in Libra on April 12th, which is ruled by this Venus direct moving towards the North Node. So this is quite significant. This, you know, April I think is when March is when I think things just totally amp up. April looks like the dominoes start to fall. Like things start to really maybe feel more um, tangible or external or, you know, less of this internal revisionary period and more of this external sort of direct outward movement. Then on April 21st, 2025, Saturn goes conjunct the North Node in your Pisces eighth house of transformation and other people's resources. So this will happen at 26 degrees. Saturn rules your seventh house of partnership, whether it's personal or professional, but it also rules your sixth house of daily work, health, and routine. So this is integrating additional themes of partnership, daily work, side businesses, health, routine, into this north node movement with all these other personal planets um but saturn is structure saturn is discipline um it's been here for a while so you know we've had quite a while to work through saturn and pisces in the eighth but saturn going conjunct the north node here could be a time where we start to see or i'm at least hoping see like the reward see the hard work paying off or increasing again like I hope so this could also indicate you know especially where partnerships whether personal or professional merge resources together typically in the eighth house the eighth house is like mutual empowerment how do we sort of pull together to create this mutual empowerment um 
And with Saturn ruling the area of partnership in your chart, it's sort of like you could join forces with someone else or whether that's a personal partnership or a professional partnership to sort of empower yourself or empower a financial situation or a transformational situation. And lastly, April 24th, we finally, again, Venus has recently just gone direct, will go conjunct that North Node for sure at 26 degrees in that Pisces 8th house. So Venus went to went direct the full moon in Libra on April 12th. Venus started applying to that North Node, but as we get to April 24th, 2025, Venus actually joins the North Node in the Pisces 8th house, where Venus rules the career, the public recognition, and the communication really at that point of increase, overall life direction, um, really coming to fruition after that long revisionary period. Now, May 18th, 2025, Jupiter at 25 degrees Gemini. So Jupiter's been in our Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals for some time. This is nothing new. But May 18th, Jupiter will be at 25 degrees Gemini, square the North Node in your Pisces 8th and South Node in your Virgo 2nd. Now, Jupiter rules that Pisces 8th house of mutual empowerment, other people's resources, transformational work. It also rules your fifth house of creativity, self-expression, joy, romance, and children if applicable. This could be tying in those themes to your long-term goals, your social network, sort of who you surround yourself with. But Jupiter will be at a north bending of the node. So this is adding an element of increase instead of decrease. So there could be increasing social network, increasing goals due to self-expression, creativity, mutual empowerment, joining forces with someone, other people's resources, transformational work. May 24th, 2025, Saturn then enters your Aries ninth house of higher education, spirituality, and long distance travel. Again, this could also be teaching, publishing, and or traveling for work as well. The ninth house is really what we do for growth and potential, in my opinion. So Saturn entering the Aries ninth house is sort of like, how can you identify and potentially get very serious and disciplined and restructure the area of growth and potential in your life. Again, Neptune is also here. So we have the planet of boundaries and structures joining up with the planet of dissolving and illusion. So we could quite literally see the dissolving of structures and boundaries regarding, you know, what our growth and potential. So dissolving outdated things. Once again, like I mentioned, dissolving those things that no longer serve us in terms of growth and potential. Some of us might actually reach a point where we look around in the world or we get very passionate about something that we think is just not working for society. It's just not... it. It just doesn't work anymore. It's it's causing a lot of pain and it's causing a lot of suffering uh, to ourselves individually and collectively. And we might seek the new growth and potential in order to dissolve these outdated structures to create something new for more growth and even more potential. It's important to know that roughly around May through August of 2025, Neptune and Saturn will sort of be hanging out in this area before retrograding back into your Pisces eighth house. So through you, you know, through roughly May, August of 2025, you might get the taste or a little bit of opportunity or that little sneak peek of sort of the dissolving of structures, um, the, you know, individually and collectively, I think globally and collectively, we might really see 
the ships as well. And it's important to note that this is really, this is happening in a cardinal sign. This is happening in a very, um, you know, Aries, very courageous, very trailblazing, likes to initiate, likes to do. So this isn't just going to be, you know, dissolve or burn it down. This is going to be very um, potentially action oriented. And again, Saturn in Aries is a pretty PO'd Saturn, um, pretty fed up Saturn. And so I think we're going to see quite a bit of change in this area individually and collectively. June 9th, 2025 is when Jupiter enters your Cancer 12th house of that subconscious, dreams, visions, um, you know, they call it this, the house of self undoing, but Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. And again, Jupiter rules your eighth house of transformation, other people's resources, sort of, you know, that mutual empowerment merging, as well as that fifth house of joy, pleasure, creativity, self-expression, and children if applicable. So Jupiter could be really expanding your mind in this area. It has a lot of um, faith and abundance and expansion for better or worse. Definitely look to see where do you have any personal placements in cancer because that is definitely going to tie in themes and flavor this. But generally speaking, you know, Jupiter moving through the 12th could be a very strong opportunity to sort of expand your mind, expand your subconscious, expand your ideas. Um, through maybe mutual empowerment or transformation. And because Jupiter rules a fifth through joy, through pleasure, through creativity and self-expression. Now, June 15th, 2025, Jupiter and Cancer will actually square Saturn in your Aries ninth house now. So Saturn and Neptune are going to be kind of doing their thing, hanging out a little bit, giving you a little bit of taste of maybe dissolving some outdated structures. But as Jupiter starts to enter its sign of exaltation in your Cancer 12th house of that subconscious, it's sort of like the hip check, the universal hip check, right? So Saturn likes to pump the brakes and slow things down and Jupiter wants to expand. So at this time, this square is very interesting because it's sort of like Saturn's joined with Neptune where it's like, mm, maybe I want to pump the brakes because this particular structure or this particular way of working doesn't work anymore. We need to sort of dissolve it or we, we need to sort of remediate it um, regarding those ninth house themes. But the square to Jupiter is sort of like, where are you slowing down changing, potentially dissolving things that no longer work regarding growth and potential to then expand and create more abundance through your mind, your dreams, and your visions. I will get more into detail in the monthly horoscope, but for time purposes, you know, I'm just going to briefly go over it for now. June 25th, 2025, we then get this new moon in your Cancer 12th house of that subconscious at four degrees conjunct Jupiter at three degrees. So as this Jupiter Saturn square is sort of like, where are we holding off changing sort of, you know, what's working, what's not working regarding growth and potential to expand sort of our mind, our dreams, our visions, and also joy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that personally. Um, but this new moon comes along on June 25th and this new moon is sort of playing a part in the story where it's like, okay, you've had a couple weeks to kind of think this through or, you know, sit with it. And this new moon is sort of like, all right, what new beginning do you want to take place here to sort of play out over the next five or six months? Then we get to June 29th, 2025 and Mercury enters shadow at three degrees of Leo through July 18th, 2025. So Mercury enters shadow in your Leo first house of self, body, appearance, and really how you show up in the world. 
And that Mercury rules your second house of earned income and also your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So I would pay attention to the shadow period from June 29th, roughly through July 18th regarding sort of who you are, how you want to show up in the world, and who you're surrounding yourself with, um, and your long-term goals and sort of how those people or those goals are really supporting you, your identity, how you want to show up. In addition to how you spend money on yourself, your appearance, and sort of how you want to show up in the world as well. So, you know, if you're doing any, like, if you're spending a lot of money on anything to do with like body, appearance, identity, I would definitely kind of, I don't, some people say like, wait until Mercury goes direct. I don't necessarily always believe that, especially on, you know, when you're looking at your natal chart and your personal placements. But I'd say if you're doing any investing in body, appearance, identity, you might go through sort of a period of like changing your mind or, you know, thinking things through or a change of plan. So just keep that in mind as you go through. But again, like life happens, you know, it is what it is. Um, But I would say more importantly, I would focus on really like how can you review and revise sort of you, how you want to show up in the world and the people that are really supporting you and those long-term goals in your life. So definitely pay attention to those contextual clues as we go through July. July looks like things continue to shift when Uranus enters your Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals on July 7th, 2025. Now I'll get more into this in sort of the closing statements regarding, you know, 2025's perspective regarding 2026 and the trine between Uranus and Pluto, but July you might start to feel the little, the, the small effects of Uranus moving into this area of sort of social networks and your hopes, your dreams, your long-term goals. Uranus is the planet of change, rebellion, innovation. So you could see some influence changing, or you might feel that, that, that change or influence around sort of who you surround yourself with and your goals. But again, I'll get more into 2026 because I think it's going to also have to do with sort of your long-term partnerships, whether it's personal or professional regarding those long-term goals. Um, But you can start to definitely feel the shift in effect starting in July, or you get that little taste before it retrogrades back into your 10th house of career and public recognition later on, which I will get to. But look out for, you know, those little sort of windows of opportunity or just a little taste of what Uranus and Gemini will feel like for quite some time. Now, July 18th, 2025, Mercury goes retrograde at 15 degrees Leo, which is your rising sign, your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, how you show up in the the world. So it's really starting that revisionary period involving what came up around July 29th through July 17th, give or take a day or two. Again, Mercury rules that 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. It also rules your second house of earned income and self-worth. So as Uranus has entered and given you potentially a little bit of a taste of change or innovation to sort of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. It's also incorporating this Mercury retrograde moment where you kind of have this, maybe there is change. Maybe there is some shifts going on with 11th house themes. And this Mercury retrograde sort of ties into the story regarding, you know, your self-worth, you know, who you surround yourself with, your long-term goals, and how you individually want to change, how you want to show up in the world. Then we get towards the end of July, 
roughly around July 20th to July 21st, we're going to have this very interesting thing happen where Mars goes conjunct the south node in your Virgo second house of earned income and self-worth, while Venus in your Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals will be squaring the nodes. It will Venus will be at that north bending. So this is indicating, yes, a square, a change, but an increase. While Mars is sort of releasing something that you know, might no longer serve you, um, may, you know, it might not fit into your life anymore. Regardless, Mars rules your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. It also rules your ninth house of growth potential. So long distance travel, spirituality, beliefs, knowledge, your higher education, also writing, publishing, um, teaching lands in this area as well. If that is applicable to you. But basically, this could be a release around something to do with home, family, property, real estate themes. Could be, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean a move, could be a renovation, it could be, you know, an adjustment within family, could be an adjustment and release around any of those ninth house themes that I mentioned. But regardless, it's happening in a financial house, it's happening in your second house of earned income. So this could potentially mean a release of something regarding, you know, those fourth house themes that I mentioned, home, family, property, real estate. Those ninth house themes, higher education, spirituality, long distance travel, really, you know, anything to do with your growth and potential where you could be maybe releasing money to, you know, work on growth and potential, maybe releasing or spending money to do something within the home or with family. Either way, it's a release of something that could definitely tie in a financial theme. While simultaneously, Venus in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals is squaring the nodes, nodes, causing a bit of change potentially. But more importantly, Venus rules your 10th house of career and public recognition, as well as your third house of communication. So some of you might see your social network increase, your goals increase regarding um, your career, your business, and your public recognition. But Venus in Gemini is a very social butterfly type of energy. So I think this overall could just increase time with friends, groups, communities, connecting with people while you're also releasing something that's no longer serving you or releasing something, maybe spending money, releasing something that's no longer um, serving your self-worth is also second house themes. While you're simultaneously increasing, um, you know, something to do with your goals and who you surround yourself with to maybe elevate or increase your career, your business, and your public recognition. Now, August 11th, 2025, Mercury goes direct at four degrees Leo. So Mercury has been retrograde, tying in 11th house themes of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals as well as your Virgo second house themes involving your earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. And how it affects you individually, your appearance, your body, your identity. Some, some of you might have gone through a revisionary period, you know, around potentially who you are, how you want to show up in the world, and how that really shape shifts your goals or who you need to surround yourself with and also sort of elevating or revising your self-worth, your value, and how that also plays a part in who you choose to surround yourself with and those long-term goals. And on a more, you know, everyday level, I guess, this could also indicate, you know, reviewing and revising 
your earned income to maybe invest in your body, invest in yourself, invest in your self-care, your appearance, sort of your own individual needs so that you can really attend to your career, your goals, time out in the world, your social network, etc. So August 11, 2025, that Mercury finally goes direct. And this, generally speaking, can give you sort of that green light around you know, what you reviewed and revised over the past couple of weeks. Now, August 12th, 2025, Venus goes conjunct Jupiter at 14 degrees Cancer. So Venus is going to join up with Jupiter in your Cancer 12th house of that subconscious, your dreams, your life vision, also the house of sort of undoing where we're, our limited, limiting beliefs are, where we, you know, mentally self-sabotage ourselves. But more importantly... Venus rules at 10th house of career and public recognition, as well as your third house of communication. Joining up with Jupiter, that rules your eighth house of transformation, other people's resources, and your fifth house of joy, fun, pleasure. So this is, you know, you have Jupiter in exaltation, having a lot of resources, a lot of ability to expand. What I really... What I really advise all of you is to really look at your cancer 12th house. Do you have any natal placements there? Because we have the two benefics joining where one of them is in exaltation. And Venus in cancer is a more subjective Venus. So in my opinion, Venus in cancer can sort of, it's more subjective. So um if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, then, you know, it's just depending on the environment is how I look at it. But you have sort of these two benefics joining in a very mental subconscious house um, that is not necessarily advertised to the world. And it's really tying in themes regarding your joy, like how you incorporate more joy into your life how you approach transformational work, if that's applicable to you, what are your resources? And it's also tying in themes regarding career and public recognition. So there can be a lot on your mind, but I think a lot of us will be sort of maybe mentally really expanding our minds to try to incorporate more joy into our daily lives by looking at maybe transformational work or what are what are our available resources that can help us create maybe more time or more expansion to the career to create more joy and abundance in our life. But because it's, you know, I try to look at things psychologically, that's sort of more of the work that I do, but I'm looking at this as these two joining together tying in and integrating those themes. But when I look at this, it's sort of like it all starts from within. Um, this is a very hidden, more subconscious mental house. And so it's sort of like if you want to change your external world, you have to change your internal state. You have to change your mental state. And with these two benefics joining, tying in those themes, it's sort of like what mentally needs to change and expand and create more joy, what you focusing on what you really love and value, having faith, maybe doing some transformational work in order to release any limiting beliefs or subconscious self-sabotaging thoughts or behavior, if that's applicable to you, in order to really level up the career, the public recognition, the resources, and most importantly, tying in those fifth house themes of joy pleasure, um, you know, children, if that's applicable to you. The fifth house is, is self-expression and creativity. So there could be a lot in the mind, but I think this could be a really juicy opportunity for us to sort of pivot our internal mental state to what we really want to focus on to create, basically turn those dreams into a tangible reality when we start really getting these outer planets making their final shift into new signs and territories. 
Specifically on Saturday, August 16th, Jupiter will actually reach its most exalted degree within Cancer at 15 degrees. So this could be a particularly good day for many of us, but um, that weekend could be a very good time to sort of, it's, it's juicy. I mean, you got the planet of good luck, abundance, expansion at its most exalted degree, hanging out with Venus, what we love, value, beauty, partnership. It's a, again, it depends on your personal placements, but I'm, I'm looking forward to this conjunction in 2025. And then August 23rd, 2025, we have a new moon in Virgo. Now, again, I'm not getting into every new moon and full moon, but this one in particular, um, I have my eye on because it's going to quincunx Saturn and Aries. Now, Saturn has recently moved tiptoed into Aries. And so this new moon in Virgo is in your second house of earned income and self-worth. So yes, it is a new beginning, a new chapter opportunity that you really want to um, launch, especially after the Mercury retrograde, all these, you know, Jupiter, Venus conjunction, all the stuff I just talked about. Um, this new moon in Virgo is kind of a new beginning or new opportunity around your finances, your budget, your earned income, your self-worth, your value, material possessions. But the quincunx to Saturn is basically an adjustment. So Saturn, again, is hanging out with Neptune as well. So what's going on with anything you're pursuing regarding your growth and potential? Okay, the ninth house, like I said, spirituality, religion, higher education, long distance travel, things we sort of seek to increase our growth and potential. So Saturn and Neptune are sort of hanging out in that area. And like I mentioned previously, it's this potential opportunity to dissolve structures or outdated patterns that aren't really serving your growth and potential long term or trying to fit your growth and potential into a system, society, or structure that is just not going to support it. And what needs to dissolve? What needs to change to initiate that? Well, this new moon is a brief moment where you can start a new chapter around finances, material possessions, and self-worth, but it might require that uncomfortable adjustment to also consider and look at what is in, inhibiting your growth and potential around this time. September, we get back into eclipse season, so the eclipses are coming. But September 1st, 2025, Saturn is going to actually retrograde back into your Pisces 8th house of transformation, other people's resources, including a partner's resources, if applicable. But if you are partnered up, Saturn does rule that Aquarius 7th house of marriage, long-term partnership, personal or professional. So if you're in a business partnership, you have sort of professional partnerships, especially ones that are um, financially involved, definitely pay attention to this because Saturn backing up is also going to tie in Capricorn six house themes of daily work, co-workers, health, routine. Saturn in Pisces is nothing new. We've We've been dealing with this for a while. However, Saturn backing up into Pisces, if you have, you know, any last minute little loose end threads of any health, daily work, side businesses, routine stuff, partnership, marriage stuff, um, it could give you an opportunity to kind of tie up loose ends restructure, maybe create some more boundaries in order to amplify any mutual empowerment in your life. Now, if you're single, this could definitely be more work-related, um, more co-worker related in terms of any transformational work or sort of 
what's going on with work or any side businesses, if that's applicable, where, you know, what's going on with money management or um, reallocating or restructuring any resources you have in order to support your career, support your routine, support your health. Now, because I'm very, um, I emphasize cycles quite a bit because Saturn is backing up into Pisces at this, you know, last degree, it could bring us back to these Saturnian themes that I just mentioned, or these Saturn ruled houses like the sixth and the seventh for you that might have come up in around May of 2025. So if you think back or you know in your journal or your calendar sort of what was going on in May 2025 that you might kind of be tying up loose ends. You might come back around to that. Again, this may or may not resonate, but if I see it, I say it because it might be applicable to you and valuable to you. Um, it depends on your personal placements, but I would definitely look if you have anything at sort of the last couple degrees of Pisces especially that might be flavoring or tying into this story you're sort of wrapping up in terms of Saturn's last little bit in Pisces. Now, September 7th, 2025, this is where if you're not taking notes, um, you're not putting anything in the calendar, this is where I really want you to pause, you know, and write it down because I have a very close eye on the eclipses in September of 2025 because I feel I feel and I also see um, these very intricate details where whatever's going on in the fall of 2024, we're sort of um, either culminating it or closing it out or sort of coming full circle in a very different way. So let me break this down for you so you can sort of visualize it in your mind. So September 7th. 2025, we have a full moon total lunar eclipse in your Pisces eighth house transformational work, other people's resources at 15 degrees, 22 minutes. So in September, September 18th, 2024, a lot of you listening to this will just be coming off of this full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces, um, September 18th, 2024. So again, if you're listening to this in October, 2024, when I'm releasing it, this is a really potent time to take notes because you're coming off of this eclipse in September of 2024 regarding any transformational work, other people's resources, finances, um, you know, merging with a partner, partnership, finances and, and partnership, potentially, um, investments, assets, debt, loans, any of those themes, note what is really culminating or what sort of changed or happened in September, 2024, because when we get to September, 2000. 25. That eclipse will be at the same degree that Saturn was at the last time we had an eclipse here in 2024. So just to reiterate and clarify, September 18th, 2024, there was a full moon, lunar Pisces eclipse in your eighth house where Saturn was at 15 degrees, 16 minutes. The full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces in September 2025 will be at 15 degrees, 22 minutes. So within a 12... You know, this is like one year later. The eclipse in, in September of 2025 will be six minutes away 
from where Saturn was. At the last eclipse that took place here in, in September of 2024. Why? I mean, I may be crazy, but when I'm looking at this, because to me, I look at the planets sort of as people, as individuals. So to get to September 2025, where we're having another full moon lunar eclipse in that Pisces 8th house, where Saturn just retrograded back into. I'm like, hmm. So almost exactly one year later, we have Saturn tiptoeing back into this area once again, where it was in 2024. What's Saturn trying to tell us? So that's my question to you. Saturn rules the seventh house of marriage, long-term partnership, personal and professional. It also rules the sixth house of daily work, health, routines, and coworkers. So journal or jot down what's going on with finances, debt, loans, resources, partnership, health, work, routines, co-workers in September 2024 that could be having this full circle moment or completion or culmination regarding, you know, what Saturn's trying to tell us. And again, I could be crazy. I could be completely off my rocker, but I'm just looking at why is this, why are we having another eclipse in the same area exactly one year later where Saturn coincidentally just retrogrades back into this area? So it's like, I'm a little sus. It's a little, uh, I'm a little suspicious of this. Like what's Saturn communicating here? Um, So that's something to kind of jot down and think about, especially because, you know, where Saturn is during the eclipse in 2024, we're going to have an eclipse almost exactly a year later at the same degree, actually six, six, not only at the same degree, six minutes apart. Um, So I think if it means something, it's quite significant. So I just really want to emphasize that because, um, He could be giving us a clue listening to this in 2024. However, the eclipse on September 7th, 2025, this time the ruler of this eclipse will be in its exaltation and cancer. So the eclipse in September of 2024 was in your Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. And it was actually in detriment. So detriment seems like a big, scary word. It's not to me. Um, It basically, all it means is that that planet, the way it wants to express itself, is sort of overdoing it. It's overexerting itself when it, it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, So This time in September of 2025, the ruler of that full moon lunar eclipse will be in its exaltation in Cancer um, and by sign, not necessarily degree, but by sign will be trining the area that that eclipse is happening. So again, I think it could be, you know, fall of 2025 could be that full circle sort of culminating moment to what was really brewing in September of 2024, where I'm hoping it's, it's, it, it's a full circle culminating moment of positivity and faith and expansion to those areas. Now, September 21st, of course, we get one eclipse, we get another. So September 21st, 2025, We have that new moon partial solar eclipse in Virgo at 29 degrees. So this is again tying in potential additional financial themes, self-worth themes. Um, This is a new moon on steroids. So this is a new beginning, a new chapter around finances, budget, self-worth, material possessions. 
But what's even more interesting about this eclipse, again, these eclipses in 2025, I think the details and are, are very fascinating to me um, because the new moon solar eclipse in Virgo at this anoretic degree, which adds a level of intensity to it, despite this new moon, new beginning eclipse is an, a new moon partial. So even though it's partial, um, I still think, you know, it happening at the last degree, the anoretic degree adds a level of intensity to this new beginning, this new chapter involving finances, budget, self-worth. The ruler of that new beginning regarding finances and self-worth will actually be in mutual reception with Venus. This is a very important detail for Leo Risings because this eclipse is happening in a financial house, a self-worth house, what is yours, and that ruler in mutual reception with Venus, Venus is the ruler of your career, your business, your public recognition, also the ruler of your communication, your third house of communication. So this is a very fascinating September to me um, because mutual reception is basically when two planets are sort of, they swapped homes and sometimes one might have a bit more resources, a bit more help. And in this case, Venus is in triplicity. So when a planet has triplicity by essential dignity, it's sort of like that planet has its friends, its network, its, its support. It has people literally helping it out to have the best outcome in many cases. Again, it depends on your personal placements. I'm generalizing here. But in terms of this being so fascinating, I mean, it's sort of like the ruler of this new beginning, this new chapter regarding finances and self-worth is maybe not in the best position, but it's getting help from the ruler of your career and your public recognition. So look out for any culminating moments or big changes that could, you know, shift or create new beginnings around finances or self-worth where your career, your business, or your public recognition is actually supporting it. October, we're really finishing up the or starting to move out of that eclipse energy that's potentially shifted a lot of us into something new um, internal or external but as we get into october closer to october 20th 2025 mercury will enter shadow in your scorpio fourth house of home family property and real estate so again definitely pay attention to sort of what came up what shifts or changes the eclipse um, brought up, particularly because it's in your money houses, self-worth transformation as well. So again, October 20th, we're sort of, you know, we're still technically in eclipse season in my opinion, but that Mercury enters shadow in your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now, this is important, I think, in reference to the eclipses because Mercury rules your friends, groups, communities, long-term goals, and it also rules, again, your second house of earned income and self-worth. So we're sort of, there's contextual clues that are building regarding finances, goals, um, who you surround yourself with that could be playing out or affecting the home, family, property, and real estate situation playing out. So again, there could be some story or contextual clue from October 20th, roughly through November 9th, before Mercury actually goes retrograde, where you start really reviewing and revising the situation that played out. Um, but this could be something like, there could be, you know, changes to home, family, property, and real estate, or you might be, you know, gearing up to review and revise, you know, what environment or living situation is going to support your goals, 
your network, your finances, and your self-worth. So again, pay attention to um, any of those any of those themes or stories that could come up between October 20th through November 9th. But it's also important to note Mercury in Scorpio entering shadow. This is a, you know, Mercury in Scorpio, I'm generalizing, but wants to skip the small talk. So whatever situations or communication or conversations you have, particularly in the area of home, people you live with or family, it could be giving contextual clues as to sort of, you know, what's going on in that environment that you might be reviewing and revising. It's also important to note that as this Mercury enters shadow, it's going to join Mars in your Scorpio fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now, Mars is home here in, in Scorpio. It's also home in Aries, but a Mars in Aries versus a Mars in Scorpio is very, it's two different Mars. Mars in Aries is very, I want to get up. I want to do, I want to do the thing. I want to be courageous. I want to, you know, extrovert energy type of situation. Mars in Scorpio, in this instance, with Mercury in shadow, is I'm going to find a way where no one else can figure it out. I'm going to, I'm going to sit with it and I'm, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a solution. So again, pay attention to those contextual clues because with it joining Mars in Scorpio, it's very deep. This is a very deep um, shadow period to me where maybe the conversations are deeper. Maybe you're really getting to the nitty gritty details of finding out a solution, finding out a way that really works for you financially, self-worth, social network, and long-term goals as well. Now, October 22nd, 2025, Neptune is going to retrograde back into Pisces where Saturn recently just retrograded back into. Again, nothing new. In my opinion, we've kind of finished up a lot of the cycles with um, Neptune going conjunct the South Node here in 2016 and Neptune going conjunct the North Node here months ago. Um, so to me, this is in my opinion, again, I think other people have different opinions and I will also go into the monthly horoscope where we get into more detail about what Neptune is really aspecting around this time. But I think this could just give us a little bit of a break from the dissolving of boundaries and structures in that Aries ninth house of growth and potential. Um, so it might give us a little bit of break, a little bit of, you know, exhale, a little bit of space. Um, but it could also be an opportunity to sort of also work on those eighth house themes, transformation, other people's resources. One last little blip of a time. Um, but again, in terms of, you know, degrees and cycles, it may or may not resonate, but it could be bringing you back to roughly March, April of 2025, where Neptune was around the, this degree the last time. So again, Neptune's leaving Aries, very initiating and fiery sign into a more cooling, dissolving waters of Pisces should be sort of an interesting break or shift before Neptune really dives into Aries in 2026, which I'll get to in the end. Now, again, these outer planets in 2025 sort of make their, you know, initiating ingress into new signs and new territories, but they're going to, they're going to retrograde back. So in November, this retrograde movement sort of continues where November 7th, 2025, Uranus will retrograde back into your Taurus 10th house of career and public recognition. Now, if you're mid-heaven or any personal placements are around the last degrees of Taurus, definitely pay attention to that. What those planets rule, it's sort of potentially Uranus's last little cycle, last little bit that could be creating the change and innovation to those areas 
that those planets rule in regards to your career, your business, and or your public recognition. But Uranus retrograding back into Taurus, any last minute change or in innovation, generally speaking, to career, business, or public recognition, again, nothing new. You've had a very long transit with Uranus, quite familiar with this. Um, but I would pay attention more to, you know, if you're midheaven or any personal placements or at that last degree of. Taurus because it could also tie in home, family, property, real estate themes as well. So November 9th, 2025, Mercury actually goes retrograde at six degrees of Sagittarius. So Mercury is in detriment in Sagittarius. So again, could potentially be overdoing it. However, with it being retrograde, it kind of turns more inward. Um, but Mercury goes retrograde at six degrees Sagittarius, where on de in December of 2024, Mercury went direct at six degrees Sagittarius. So again, something that could have been playing out in December of 2024 regarding Mercury's rulership in your chart. So this would be finances, self-worth, friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals that could be coming full, full circle could be coming to maybe uh, you know a slight review and revise or maybe you have an entirely new perspective on a financial situation, a friendship or a long-term goal. It may or may not resonate. It's pretty typical for Mercury to do this degree wise, but again, if I see it, I say it. Now, November 29th, 2025, that Mercury will go direct at 20 degrees Scorpio. So this is also tying in again, the review and revise with home, family, property, real estate. Um, and with Mercury finishing up the retrograde in that Sagittarius fifth house, sort of, you know, creative projects, self-expression, anything going on with your children, if that's applicable, a dating situation, romantic that you've kind of reviewed and revised, maybe in regards to your self-worth, a financial situation. And so it looks like Leo Risings are starting to finish up the year heavily, potentially re reviewing and revising sort of the financial um, goals, who you surround yourself with. Um, but it looks like with an entirely new perspective than 2024, and it looks like you're really finishing up 2025, really focused on maybe how to incorporate that on a foundational level, sort of rooted and integrated in your life from a home and living perspective or relationships with people you live with or family, um, while simultaneously maybe looking at, you know, how to enjoy life more, how to incorporate more fun, more pleasure in your life and sort of what that really means to you and maybe balancing that financially or balancing that with your goals. Again, I'll get into more detail as we get through the year. But it's also important to note that after this Mercury goes direct in your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate on November 29th, it's shortly, it happens shortly after a new moon in your Scorpio fourth house, which happened on November 20th. So this also, I think, ties into that story of maybe creating an entirely new chapter, a new, a new way, a new beginning that will sort of unfold over the next five or six months as you get into 2026. Now, December, I think, sneaks up on us and gets pretty energetic, pretty hot, um, December 4th, 2025, we have a full moon in your Gemini 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Again, the moon moves very quickly, so this will be brief, but that full moon really illuminating and culminating the area of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals will square the north node in Pisces and the south node in Virgo. So it's this spotlight. It's this culminating moment in friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. And it's squaring your two money houses 
Um, but it's actually forming because it's a full moon, the moon's in Gemini, the sun's in Sagittarius, um, the south node's in Virgo and the north node's in Pisces. So we call this a mutable grand cross. Um, so by degree, they'll all be at 13 degrees. Um, and so this mutable grand cross on December 4th will give us this brief day or this brief moment for a few hours um, to be adaptable or make changes to sort of, you know, our goals, what we find pleasurable, um, how we have fun. And, you know, again, it's tying in your two financial houses. So it's sort of like as, especially getting into the holiday season, it's probably more obvious for many of you, but this could be, you know, adapting or making changes to finances, your, you know, your immediate finances versus your long-term money management um, in regards to spending more time with your social network, spending more time focusing on goals, creative projects, enjoying life, um, having fun. So again, with we are, with other rising signs, I think this will be a bit more intense, but I think for Leo risings, it's in houses that... Um, I think for us might just require some adaptability or bending to adjust um, finances to support all these other sort of moving parts towards the end of the year. Um, again, other rising signs, I think it will be more angular, more major, major areas of the life. But I think for Leo risings, this is I think on a general level, again, it depends on your personal placements, but this honestly looks like maybe more fun, more time with people, more energetic stuff going on, maybe more creative projects, more romance, and sort of adapting and bending and sort of making the necessary changes to sort of money management in order to support um, the more joy and the more fun and the more, you know, socialization maybe. Um, but one thing to keep in mind with the mutable grand cross, again, this will be brief. It will probably happen for just a few hours on December 4th, but sometimes with a mutable grand cross, it's sort of like we make too many changes when it's not necessary. Um, so mutable grand crosses, in my opinion, can be prone to sort of, you know, as they say, throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater, um, it's a good day to kind of pause and think what's really working, what what you can actually keep and not have to change versus the other areas that do need a bit of adaptability or change so that you're not dropping all the balls. You can kind of keep juggling, you know, maybe two and, and toss out one of them and, you know, get a new one, if that makes sense. So, um, and just be aware it could be a brief day of where we're a bit prone, especially with a full moon. People can feel a bit more alive around that time. Um, we can be a little bit prone to like overdoing it or too much change or being too activated. So it's a good time to pause, especially as we get more into December specifically December 15th, 2025 onward when Mars enters Capricorn. Mars is going to enter Capricorn where it's exalted. Mars is in its exaltation. Mars is a planet of desire and action. One thing I've noticed over many years is that when Mars enters Capricorn, it's sort of like society gets just a little bit more buzzy. Um, Again, this is the, the holidays. So if you celebrate the holidays, just be aware of sort of overdoing it. Mars and Cancer can be prone to burnout, over exhaustion. If you have Mars and Cancer in your natal chart, pay very close attention to this. This will be your Mars return, giving you an opportunity to create a, a new two and a half, roughly two and a half year cycle. Um, with your actions, your desires, particularly in the area of daily work, side businesses, coworkers, health, and routines. 
Um, but all in all, generally speaking, Mars is going to kick up a lot of action and a lot of heat in the area of work, health, and routines. So again, putting things into perspective, we're kind of going into December heavily focused on long-term goals or our social network, really maybe looking at a financial situation and making any necessary um, adaptations and changes to support the social network and the goals as we go into 2025. Then Mars enters our sixth house of daily work, health, routines, and coworkers, kicking up a lot of action and a lot of heat with work. So yes, this is the holiday season for a lot of us. However, for Leo Risings, this could be a time where work um, and your routines sort of are prone to overdoing it. I've noticed over the years as a, as a Leo rising myself that when Mars enters Capricorn, I get it's sort of like workaholic times 10. Um, it's sort of like my routine goes out the window and all I think about is projects and work um, and, you know, getting things done. So again, after, I would say after the eclipses in September, and with the Mercury retrograde, you know, October, November, that could be a good time to sort of um, get ahead of this so that when Mars goes into Capricorn, maybe, you know, you've finished the thing, a lot of the things that you've needed to do. Mars does rule your fourth house of home, property, real estate, family, um, also your Aries ninth house of growth and potential travel as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's more obvious, but for Leo Risings, it's really highlighting like holiday travel, uh, growth, potential, stuff going on with home and family. So this is more of a typical holiday season, especially for Leo Risings, which is fine. But given the current sort of transits going on, it's, it's seriously prone to overdoing it, burnout and exhaustion. So please, please, please focus on the routine, focus on the health, especially because we're in an entirely different situation from December of 2024. December 2024, Mars was not in its, not in its exaltation. It was actually retrograding back into its fall. Um, and Jupiter was not in its exaltation. <laughs> Jupiter was actually in its area of detriment. So the planet of abundance, good fortune, and expansion was in detriment, and the planet of action and desire was retrograding back into its fall. Now we have Jupiter in its exaltation and Mars in its exaltation in December of 2024, opposite each other, for Leo risings on that mind body axis. So it's really important to sleep, take time for yourself, um, you know, really nurture your body, your health, your needs, your routine, um, because I think we're going to be heavily prone to really overdoing it in December of 2025 compared to December of 2024, which is more of a revisionary um, thing, sort of slowing down. Um, totally, totally different situation. But with that being said, I want to get more into sort of all of 2025 and sort of the perspective going into 2026 because it's really 2025 is gearing us up and creating those shifts and changes that are going to really move us through 2026 where I think we're really going to see um, things move forward regarding 2025. So 2025, like I've mentioned a million times at this point, Jupiter was in its exaltation in your cancer 12th house of that subconscious. Now in 2026, Jupiter is going to move into your Leo first house of self, body, appearance, and identity. This is very important because Jupiter is moving into a fire sign. Now, remember, Saturn is also moving into a fire sign. So I think in, 
was it 2023? Definitely 2024. You know, we have, we've, we've been having these periodic squares between Jupiter and Saturn. So the squares are a point of tension, you know, a point of potential change or action needed between Jupiter, the planet of expansion, and Saturn, the planet of restriction or boundaries. So the squares between Jupiter and Saturn, I have noticed, have caused quite a bit of um, frustration where many of us have felt like we really wanted to expand in one area, but another area of our life was sort of restricting us or causing more work or being like, but you need to work on this a little bit more before you can expand in this area. Now, as we get into 2026, Jupiter and Saturn by sign are going to be trying each other. So a trine is more of a positive aspect, or at least by reputation. It's not always positive because trines tend to make things happen just naturally. Like it just sort of happens. It lands in our lap. Um, we don't have to exert or try very hard for it to, with trines, to make something happen necessarily, um, for better or worse. But Jupiter and Saturn being, you know, sign based by, you know, in a trine, maybe not necessarily by degree in 2026, um, but by sign being in that trine configuration is, I think, a totally different story between how we want to expand and have faith and abundance versus where our boundaries and structures are. Now, also keep in mind, adding another layer to this story, Saturn will be with Neptune at the Aries point in 2026. I believe this will happen in February of 2026 when Saturn and Neptune will ingress into Aries again. Um, we got a little taste in 2025, but when they ingress into Aries again in, I believe, February of 2026, it will be at zero degrees Aries, which is a critical degree. It's a sensitive degree. It's also the Aries point, um, which adds a level of importance or urgency to Saturn's structures, patterns, and Neptune's dissolution of things. So again, we could really be moving into 2026 heavily focused on, for you, Leo Rising, again, what patterns, structures, even societal patterns that really need to dissolve or an Aries, a fire sign, be burnt down to support the growth and potential we really want to make before Jupiter moves into our first house of self, body, appearance, and identity in roughly mid-2025, where they'll start to, again, be in that trine configuration, which is going to be very different from that, um, you know, gas break, push-pull situation with the Jupiter-Saturn squares that we've periodically been experiencing now, again, Uranus is going to also enter Gemini or re-enter Gemini in 2026, and we'll start to try and Pluto in Aquarius. Um, again, Uranus was already, you know, gave us a taste in 2025, but in 2026, this will increase. This will, um, in my opinion, Uranus is the planet of change of innovation, of rebellion, entering Gemini, a sign of communication in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. The 11th house, I like to think of like, you know, our social network, maybe even social media. I like to think of the 11th house as like the masses. So, you know, there could be changes to the masses for Leo risings, changes to how you communicate with the masses for Leo Risings, changes to your social network, your friends, your groups, your communities, and your long-term goals, where Uranus will start to trine Pluto in that seventh house of marriage, professional partnerships, and personal partnerships. 
again, creating um, the trine, it sort of, again, naturally sort of happens. It's not like a square where there's tension or frustration or you got to, you know, change something to try. Um, the trine configuration between Uranus and Pluto, I think, is a rapid acceleration of change and transformation to the areas of partnership, um, social networks, and long-term goals for Leo risings. But co collectively, globally, I think we could see a rapid acceleration to old patterns dying off, new technology, ways of communicating, information. Um, we could also see more community-based living um, community-based businesses, especially with Aquarius being sort of the, the group mentality, the humanitarian, um, what really needs to change to support the collective. And um, so we could really start seeing, you know, the rapid acceleration of that in 2026. In addition to Saturn, Neptune, you know, dissolving those boundaries, those old patterns, those old ways. But for you, Leo rising, um, this is going to really start pulling in, you know, or tying into your own individual growth and potential. And lastly, in 2026, that North Node will start to move into your Aquarius seventh house of marriage, long-term partnership, whether it's personal or professional. And where there's the North Node, there is the South Node we have to consider which will consequently be moving into your Leo first house of self, body, appearance, and identity. So the Aquarius Leo axis, generally speaking, is very much about, you know, Leo, the individual, what is my needs, who, you know, it's, it's me versus Aquarius, the collective, the group. So what is supporting you your body, yourself, your identity, and balancing that within the group, the society, and the group and soci societal needs. Sometimes people get too black and white with the North and South node, in my opinion, especially with Leo and Aquarius, where it's like, forget your needs, forget the individual, just focus on the group and the collective. But for me, in all the years that I've been doing this, I think it's very important to get the message out where Aquarius is, yes, about the group, the societal needs, but also in a way where you can support the group by honoring the individual gifts and needs of each person within the group. So this is to say, like, very much do not forget about yourself and your individual needs and your own gifts and talents that the group needs. We all have, you know, our uniqueness, our unique fingerprint of how we do things. But I think with all these other transits going on, I think society or collectively we might start shifting into um, a new way of being where it's sort of like we really need people to step up and start being there themselves and sharing their their uniqueness or their gift and their their talent to support the change the the rapid acceleration of change especially with the Uranus Pluto trine as well so with that being said it is an absolute incredible time to be alive with all of you.